Think I can do this in 10 minutes? But one way, instead of you, you know how those fate of the tree addresses are. They just take too long, you know? Who wants to, let's just turn to our regular programming, you know? We don't want all that stuff. But it's an honor to be here, and let me tell you, just turn to someone and say, it's all your fault that all that stuff happened. <laughs> and then do this one, it's all for your fault. Thank you, Lord, for the things that you're doing through the tree. Uh, listen, today is the last of our series, um, uh, Created to Be. So prepare to stand and just get our hearts ready for what God wants to do. You know, we've talked about this, and we've talked about this since the beginning of the year. God created us to be, to believe, to belong, to become, to build, to be fruitful. And today we're just going to wrap it up with all the things we've talked about, state of the tree address, to be blessed. You know, God has blessed us. God has blessed you. And this is the weird thing. Sometimes it's so strange that someone's trying to tell you you're not blessed. Someone's trying to confuse things. And uh, regardless of what's happening in your life, even if things are not exactly the way you want, maybe your back is hurting, maybe your leg's broken, maybe there's some stuff that's not working out right, and maybe finding, you know, you're still blessed. And this is the weird thing. If you're not careful to understand his favor on your life, you get confused and you begin to make unwise decisions. So I want us to address this. I want to open up with the scripture. We know this. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. What is God saying? Is we're above, not beneath. What God is saying is that he actually has given us this whole place. We're in charge of this thing. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. Hallelujah. Do you know that you are blessed? Hallelujah. He blessed them. And he commanded them. And he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. We are blessed. Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity, for this time that you've given us to, today, this moment. Allow these next few minutes to challenge us, to encourage us, and to transform us. Lord, we believe that we are blessed and that you desire for us to be a blessing. And I ask Lord, that that reality and that powerful word that you desire to speak over love, our lives is the truth and it will set us free in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I know it sounds cheesy because we say it all the time. Turn to someone and say, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. and I, maybe you've never thought about this. When you look at the word blessed, I know that's where they, you look at the, some of the scripture that says happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable. And now when we talk about that word, and this is the thing, maybe you've never thought about this, and I'm going to share something with you, which is very powerful. In the Old Testament, and also even the concept of the word blessed, is connected to God-likeness. Matter of fact, if you weren't a God or connected to God, you could not use the word blessed. Ooh, that's interesting, isn't it? So, in many ways, God is saying, I've created you in my image and in my likeness. We went through all of this stuff. You've got to believe that you are part of God. You are part of Him. And you've got to believe that. And you belong to Him. And you're becoming more like Him. And God is building his kingdom through you because you are king of kings and lord of lords. He is the king and you are kings with him. And this is the strange thing. When you even use in the Old Testament or if you got the understanding of settings, in, in the old ways was that if you were a king, you were some kind of God connected. God ordained you. you know, let's talk about the old days. You know, the old days, if you were King Richard or whoever you were, you were considered to be in line next to God. 
Uh, the Pope is that way in the Catholic Church. You know, he is blessed and highly favored above the rest of us, according to the Catholic Church. Uh, according to Scripture, we are blessed, highly favored. We're connected right there. We're above. Matter of fact, the last thing he created was us. And he said, this all here belongs to you to have, to have dominion, to enjoy. This is what God did at the very beginning. So, you know what? When somebody says, I'm blessed, you are actually saying that there's a God likeness in you. And you're connected to that. Now, when you say that to someone, you might, you know, say, oh, I don't think they're God-like. So you might not use that word anymore. But according to Scripture and according to my understanding and biblical understanding, this, this is what God communicates over and over. God desires to bless. Did you know that? God's not trying to withhold. God desires to bless. Now, in Genesis, I'm just going to go through a couple of Scriptures. In Genesis 5, this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. See, I'm not making stuff up here. In the likeness. We were God-like. We were made like God in that, in, in that sense. We're not God. Okay? But God-likeness is in us. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day that they were created. We were created to be blessed. We were created to be blessed. So now I want to kind of see how God deals with mankind and how he begins to unfold his story and his favor on us. And one of the things with this, this, this Bible series that we're going to start, you know, it's his story. Really, like history. When you see his story unfold, and the Bible is a historical book, but it's not just a historical book. It is a book that God is trying to teach us and communicate things with us. And so when we go to Abraham, and we begin to see that Abraham, what we call the father of faith, or the first one who really, really did say, I believe, and I belong, and I am becoming. And I am building something, not this earthly stuff, but I'm believing, if you read this in, in, in Hebrews, it says, he was looking for a city whose maker and builder was God. It was not something earthly. And he was connecting to that. And so when, when Abraham had that encounter, and when he had his son, and his name was changed, we talked about this already, about the seed, how it changes us, the seed of God in us, how it changes us. And when that took place, Abraham's name was changed. His, uh, but also he was called a father of many nations. And so there's something that God wants to communicate. So here, and we, we see it in the History Channel, you're going to see this, this part laid out a little bit about when Abraham offers his son Isaac. And God tells him to do this, but it's a symbolic example of Jesus Christ dying on the cross, giving his life for us. And this is what it says, because you've obeyed me, because you believe me, because you belong to me, because you're becoming like me, I want to make a couple of promises over you. And this is what it says in Genesis 22. It says, in blessing, I will bless you, and in multiplying, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of the heavens and like the sand on the seashore. And your seed, your heir, will be possess the gates of his enemies. And in your seed, and I kind of used this the Amplified Version actually, is talking about Christ. Shall all the nations of the earth be blessed by him, bless themselves because you have heard and obeyed my voice. I want, I want to just kind of talk just for a moment about this. Do you realize what this is saying? I want you to go back to the, to the 17. I want you to get something here because sometimes when you read stuff like this, this is the word that God gave us to start treating your life. I was a pastor at another church, and God says, I want you to, in blessing, I want you to bless, and in multiplying, I want you to multiply. I want multiple churches to start. Guess where I was last week? I wasn't here. I was in Memphis, outside of Memphis, South Haven, and we were at a church that we helped start, a little seed. We started it. There were over 240 people at that service there. And it, there was no church there. Five years ago, two years ago, there was nothing there, and we planted the seed, and now, Without you even knowing it, you have multiplied. We have blessed and have been multiplied several times. And then from there, another church was started, and they had over, two, uh, over 110 last Sunday in, 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 in Colorado from this church. 
And then we've helped some other churches get started. I'm telling you, it's amazing what God, but in blessing, if we realize that we are to multiply, that we are to increase, that we are to be fruitful, and when we begin to realize our life is not just about taking, but blessing. And when you give blessings, blessings return to you. In blessing, I will bless, and in multiplying, I will multiply. Now look what this says. Some of us might not see this and might not understand what this is saying, but it says, multiply your descendants like the stars of the heavens, and as the sea on the seashore. Is that what it says? Double checking, right? There's two promises here that God's trying for us to understand here. He says, first of all, I want you to know that I have spiritual multiplicational <coughs> things for you. Stars in the heavens, sand in the seashore. When he was talking to Abraham, he says, look, this natural sand, I'm going to multiply your natural descendants like that. But not only am I going to give you natural descendants, I'm also going to give you spiritual, heavenly descendants. Guess what we are? We're, uh, most of us in here are not Jewish, so we're not natural sand descendants of Abraham, but we are stars in the heavens because we're spiritual descendants. Through who? Through Jesus Christ. This is what this is saying. And it says... Like the stars in the heavens, like the sand on the seashore, and your seed will possess the gates of your enemies. You know what this is saying? Remember what Jesus said? I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know what? He would like to shut this place down, but he can't. He'd like to shut you up, but he can't. You, if you know who you are. Amen. He's trying to cause you to stumble and fall and not know who you are, but he can't if you know who you are. Amen. And you are blessed. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Now, God speaks blessings over us. I just want to kind of go over through this. If you don't know this, this is my, one of my favorite scriptures. We always do when we have dedications. But this is what it says. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. I mean, come on, this is the priestly blessing. This is God blessing us. I mean, that sounds good, doesn't it? I want that over me. I like that. I like what God says. And He says, I want you to know this. I want to read it again. I want to speak this into your life. The Lord, I'm just going to say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace peace. Maybe you came into this place this morning going, I don't have much peace. But I'm telling you, the God of peace and the peace of God wants to be in your life. Amen. In His favor, He wants to shine upon you. I want to read to you something out of Deuteronomy, and I'm going to say it in another way, because this is the thing that God says. If we don't get this, we live our lives in a defeated way. But this is what it says in Deuteronomy 28. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obeyed the voice of our God. Now, I'm going to say something. God is trying to pour it into you if you would just simply believe and obey. Amen. Amen. Some of us are struggling with that and we're, we're sinning and allowing sin to influence our lives. And when we allow sin to influence, we're the, we're, we're, the, we're the tail, not the head. You ever heard the story about how the the tail wags the dog, right? That's what happens to us if we allow sin to rule our lives. It's like the tail wags the dog. And if you really continually function in sin, your tail just wags your life every which way. And you're not in charge, but the, the tail shouldn't be wagging, the dog should be wagging the tail. We're the head, not the tail. So I want you to get that in your spirit. Do you understand that? I mean, that's very simple. That's, I mean, that's as simple as explanation as I can give you. God's favor is upon you. And this is what it says. This is what he communicates to us. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of your body, and the producer, uh, produce of your ground, and the increase of your herd, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flock. Blessed shall you be in your basket, in your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. And the Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you, to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. I mean, I don't know how complicated this is. God's blessing for all of our lives. Maybe I'm the only one, but I don't mind saying it. I'm blessed. Blessed, 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 blessed. 
I'm blessed with my family, with my kids, with the church, with life, with everything, and I will not uh, receive a lie that I'm not. Amen. I am highly favored, and so are you. Live your life from that perspective, and everything begins to change who you are. God has... God has and is blessing you, not cursing you. Uh, we do a pretty good job doing that ourselves. God is not in the cursing business. He's in the blessing business. And we, because of our misunderstanding, sometimes live our lives cursed, not blessed. It has nothing to do with God. So I'm going to read to you from Job, which is a lot of times misunderstood. But I want to kind of bring out the point here. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? You have not made a have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hand, and the possessions have increased in the land. Now, but now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Now let me let me just kind of understand this a little bit. Now God and Satan had a discussion. And in this discussion, uh, he's saying, you know what, Job's blessed, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's blessed. That's what I want. This is what God says. I want him to be blessed. Not only do I want Job to be blessed, I want everybody to be blessed. I've put a hedge around everybody. I've blessed everybody. I've given everyone favor. But Satan is up there going, you know what? If I can just get my hands on these people. If I can just find a way, because I don't want to bless them, I want them to be miserable. I want them to curse God. And we have the book of Job kind of as a lesson to understand that God's desire for us is to bless us. He's, look, have you looked at my servant Job? Have you looked at my people? Have you looked at the tree of life? They're blessed people. You know, this is the same thing that we see in the book of Genesis, uh, I mean Exodus, when, and when we see the story of how Balaam was trying to curse Israel. He was trying. Matter of fact, he was hired by a king. And he said, I want you to curse these people. I want you to curse. So he got out there and he started trying to curse these people. And he tried his very best. And, he, and, he, and all that came out of was blessings. It's like, these people are highly favored. Grace of God is upon their lives and everything. And this king got mad. He says, I'm paying you to curse these people. And Balaam says, okay, I'll try again. So he goes up there and he tries to curse them and he can't. He can't. But then this is what the story says. Listen, I can't curse what God has blessed. But if they dishonor God, they'll curse themselves. And I'm telling you something right now. If you haven't figured this out, I want you to know this. God's desire from the very beginning has always to bless you, not to harm you, to favor you, to go beyond your, even your understanding. You're the head, not the tail. You're above, not beneath. That's what God promises. But if you, let's kind of get this picture in our heads. What does it say in Genesis? It says, it says the head will crush the heel of Satan and will bruise his head. So yes, there's a little conflict, we see that. But this is the only way, the only way that you're going to get cursed is if you hang down here with Satan mm -hmm. on the ground because he is to crawl and he dust the rest of his life. In that sense, symbolically with the snake. But it's the same thing us. We're not to hang out down there. We are to be above, not beneath. Amen. And so this is what God speaks over us. And so I want us to understand this. Let me read to you, which, which uh, kind of connects to the tree. I think it's a great scripture. It communicates who we are as a church. Psalm 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks on the counsel of the ungodly, who stands in the way of sinners, who sits in the seat of the scornful. But he is delighted in the law of the Lord, and in this law he doth meditate day and night. Come on, help me out. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His release shall not wither. And whatever he does to us, prosper. We are the tree of life. And God blesses us. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You don't listen. You don't connect to. You don't allow yourself to be influenced by those who speak 
in the wrong sense about God and who He is. We don't stand, we don't sit, we don't agree with the enemy. But the wicked are not so. They're tossed, they're going every which way. But you and I are blessed. Do you believe it? Amen. See, if we believe it, we live it. We act it out. We go for it. This is what God's communicated to us. Speak and live in the blessings. Now that's what I've been doing here this morning. I'm speaking and living and believing the blessings of God. And I can go to you a couple of scriptures. I love this Psalm. Psalm 103. And this is actually where I have to convince myself or that I speak to my own soul. Renee sang a song this morning uh, about it as well with my soul. Do you know what happened with that whole story about how this man, he was in Chicago, he was a lawyer, um, he uh, lost his wealth, he lost everything, and so he decided to change some things around. He sent his daughter and, and wife and so forth over to England, and he was going to come, and uh, then he got the report that his family had, had you know, his kids died uh, on the ocean, they drowned in, in, in the sea, and so he wrote this song. Because... The, the devil wanted him to say, you're not blessed anymore. You don't have God's favor anymore. You, you've lost financially. You've lost relationally. You're, you're, you're done. And he, as he was going over, wrote this song. And he says, it is well with my soul. Why? Because he knew. He knew some things that our temporary world is temporary. But the things of God and who we are with God are eternal. And this is what it says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. I'm going to tell you something. Somebody does not want you to know there's benefits. There are benefits with God. And this is what it says. Who forgives all of your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Come on. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget about all these benefits. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. It's like i got to remind myself how blessed I am. He forgives all of my iniquities, heals all of my diseases. He is for me, not against me. He desires to bless me. What about you? Jesus. He desires to bless Jesus. us. Come on. Come on. So with that in mind, if that's what God has for us, let me just read to you, blessed. Now, this is from Matthew chapter 5. What's the first thing? When God, Jesus Christ, in the flesh, came, the first sermon he ever preached was on blessings, the Beatitudes. All right? And this is one of the things I want to give to you here. The word blessed means happy, to be envied, blissome, joyous, spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, satisfaction in God's favor, salvation, regardless of their outward condition. Thank you, Lord. I mean, sometimes we base our lives on what it looks like out here. God says, I'm not interested in what all is out here. I'm interested in what's in your heart. And from your heart, the abundance and the blessings flow. And I, I don't care if you have $38 or if you have $380,000. I don't care what that is. As long as your heart is right, the blessings are going to flow. Amen. They're going to flow. And the favor of God is there for us to experience. So I want to just kind of know this. You know this. Then he opened his mouth and taught them. Jesus teaching them. What did he say? Lesson. Let's go to the next scripture, please. He opened his mouth. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You know, and when you begin to understand, it goes all the way down through and it begins to give all the blessings, the beatitudes. I would call them to be godlike. If we really want to be God-like and we experience the blessings, these are the attitudes that we should have. God attitudes. Literally, that's what it is. When we have these attitudes, the things begin to happen. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the poor, for, they, for their heart they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I mean, we read all this stuff. Blessed are you when you they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Let me ask you something. Was Jesus blessed when he walked on the earth? Yes. Did some people persecute him, revile him? Did they say stuff about him? It didn't bother him. 
Because it, they, he knew who he was. Exactly. I mean, I got stories about that in my own life. There's some people who revile me. They don't like me. But you know what? I'm blessed. My grandfather, he was put in concentration camp for preaching the gospel. You know what? They reviled him. But you know what? He's blessed. But guess what he did? He blessed his family. And I'm a descendant of that. And I'm still blessed. Amen. 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 See, the devil will stop. You know, my mom will tell you this story every day of the week if you listen to her. My mom will tell you that she went to the doctor and they told her, listen, Andrew, I mean, she says, you've got to give up this child and you, both of you are going to die. You need to abort this child. And she says, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. And dad carried mom out of the hospital and went home and she says, God's going to take care of me. And I was born, I'm the meanest, the tallest, the, the preaching machine of the family. And I'm telling you what, the devil wanted to get out before I even was born. And yet, God has blessed. I am that blessed to so all of you. And guess what? Our job is to be a blessing. You know what? Even if we're not doing that well in certain areas, we're going to do everything we can to bless. And even if some people don't get that they're blessed, we're going to bless them anyway. Amen. Even if they don't appreciate it, we're going to bless. We're going to bless, bless, bless. Because that's who we are. And we're not going to allow somebody to rob us from continually being a blessing. And I want to end this today uh, because I'm over time. <laughs> So, if you're over time, the last part of this thing, there's one more point that I want to make, and it says, allow the blessings to flow. Allow the blessings to flow. And if you don't understand this setting, I'm just reading from the Beatitudes. And I want you to look at this, okay? It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its favor, how shall it be seasoned? It is the good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under men. Now, if you don't know you're blessed, then you're good for nothing. Amen. You're supposed to be salt. You're supposed to be a season. You're supposed to bring in ingredients. And when you show up and you know you're blessed, you're going to bring something flavorable to life. And this is what this is saying. But if you don't, you're going to be trampled on. That sounds like you're defeated underneath. You're the tail, not the head. And this is what it says. You are the light of the world. Did you realize that we are the light of the world Amen. through Jesus Christ? Because He lives inside of me. Yep. The light of the world lives inside of me. The light of the world lives inside of you. The light of the world lives in this church. And guess what? We are light to this city. This is what it says. No, go back. Please, thanks. <laughs> a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Tree of life. If you ask people all over town, they can tell you about tree of life. You know why? There's a light shining through this place. Nor do they hide a lamp under it, a basket, put it on a lampstand. It is, gives light to all who are in the house. I mean, this is what God wants. Listen, if you understand, when we are blessed, it just begins to impact everything around us. You are blessed. Don't question it. Don't doubt it. Don't let anyone deceive you. Don't let anyone mess with you. You are blessed. Hallelujah. And right now, I'd like for you to just bow your heads for a moment, and I want to ask this question. I know the day was a little longer than normal, but because we just had to talk about all the blessings. <laughs> right now, you know whether or not you're hiding that bushel. Uh, you're hiding the light under a bushel. You know whether or not you're sitting that lamp in your light or not. Maybe right now you've been living in darkness. Maybe you've not really believed. Maybe you've allowed sin to wag your life and to just take you every which way to manipulate you and control you. But you know what? Today you can stop allowing that to happen and today you can turn your life from a curse to a blessing because that, that's what God wants, that's why God came, and that is what God intends to do for your life. And right now, I want to say to you, if you don't have that blessing, that favor on your life, Jesus is waiting. Actually, he says, in the scripture, he says, I'm knocking at the door. If you will open, I will come in and I will bless you. Because if I move in, blessings, blessings, blessings will flow into your life. You're not cursed. You're highly favored. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. He wants to forgive all of your iniquities. He wants to forgive all of your sins. He wants to heal all of your diseases. He desires to bless you. 
So if you're here in this house and you want the blessing, I want you to just raise your hand. I want to be blessed. I want the favor of God. I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Come on, let me see those hands. See them. I see them. I see them. I see them. I see them all over the house. All over the house. This is what it is. God wants to bless you. Listen, don't, don't, he's not an Indian giver. He's not someone who gives and then takes away. But if your earthly father knows how to give you good gifts, how much more does your heavenly father give you those things that you ask? You're asking right now to be blessed. You're asked to be in his favor. And the priestly blessing as a pastor, I want to speak that over to you. I want God's face to shine upon you. I want him, he's gracious to you right now. Let's stand. Let's stand. If you raised your hand, you want to rededicate your life. You want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You raised your hand. I'm not trying to push something here, but I just want to say to you, start walking in the blessings. The steps of a righteous man are order of the Lord. The first thing you need to do is to say, you know what? I'm going to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, and I'm going to go to the cross. To some people, this cross looks like a curse, and it was a curse that became our blessing. Because it says everyone who dies on a tree is cursed. And Jesus Christ was cursed so we could be blessed. So come to the cross. If there's anyone that raised their hands, come on. If you need to come to the cross, let's give them praise. As they come, come on. As parents, we want to bless our kids, and all we're waiting for is a little bit of obedience. That's all we're waiting for. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to bless my kids. All I want from them is just a little, just a little obedience. And I'm not even trying to control them. I just want a little obedience. And God's saying the same thing. You know what? God wants to bless you beyond what you can. All He wants is a little obedience. Because you obeyed, I'm going to bless you. I want to multiply you. And you're going to defeat your enemies. And I'm going to put you in the gates. And I'm going to put you in authority. And I want you to conquer. So I'm going to say again. If the Spirit of God right now. And I'm, this is where I don't care how long I take. Because I know in my spirit something is about to happen here. If God has knocked at your door. All he's asking you to do is come. Be obedient. You don't have to try to fix everything. Be perfect in everything. Just simply obey today. Come to the cross. Come to Him and allow His love to flow through your life because all He wants to do is bless you. In this church, that's all we're going to do. This next year, all we're going to do throughout this year, in blessing, we're going to bless. And in multiplying, we're going to multiply. This is what it's all about. All these people that have come to the cross, this is what it's all about. There's not been a service this whole past year that we've not had someone come to the cross. Do you realize that? You know, I go to some churches where they are. Why? Because we know we're blessed and we're trying to give the blessing away. And if you've been blessed, it's easier to bless others. If you've been loved, it's easier to love others. If you've been forgiven much, it's easy to forgive others. If you've been healed, you don't mind sharing your testimony, giving life. And I'm telling you right now, the state of the tree is that we're highly favored. We're like a tree that's planted by the river. Its roots go deep. We're connecting to the one until we become one. Its leaves shall not wither. Whatever we do will prosper. 350 people dedicating their lives to the Lord this past year and today, seven, eight, seven, six that have come surrendering their life to the Lord, rededicating. This is what Tree of Life is all about. Amen. 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 Let's pray this prayer together. If you're there, if you're upstairs, let's pray this prayer together. Thank you for your blessings. I receive the blessings. I want the seed of Christ to come into my life. I 
want that fruitfulness to take off in me. I no longer want to be whacked by sin. Yeah, I know that sounds cheesy. It's right. But I want to receive your favor in my life. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for forgiving me. And from this day forward, I will walk in your favor, in your blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen. I apologize for keeping you a little longer today. Elders, if you would come, if you if your spirit needs prayer, if you need intercession, whatever, and guess what? It's not even 12 o'clock, so you can still beat uh, whatever church out there to whatever restaurant. You can still make it. Because you are blessed.